Welcome back to another episode of the Draw Control Podcast. On today's episode, I'm joined by former UMBC and Clemson women's lacrosse player, Claire Boxtai. In her lacrosse career, Claire has played in 67 games and scored 204 times. She had 67 assists, 271 points, 35 ground balls, and 12 cost turnovers. This allowed Claire to be named American East Co-Attacker of the Year in 2023, win the Retriever Award, be named to the first team all-conference in America East three times, be named to the American East all-tournament team and rookie team. Clara has also been named to the American East and ACC academic team four times in her career, and she set the single-season record for UMBC for goals with 63. I'm super excited to have her on today. So, Clara, welcome to the podcast, and how is everything going? Yeah, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Yeah, everything's good. Just, you know, adapting to post-grad life, not having lacrosse anymore, but adjusting pretty well so far. Yeah. Well, like you just mentioned, you just wrapped up your college career. So what have you been up to since graduation? And do you still plan on being involved with lacrosse um, in the near future? Or is that sort of it for you? Yeah, so I am still enrolled in classes this summer, so I'm finishing up my master's degree in athletic leadership at Clemson, which is, uh, my master's is all online, so I've been able to be home and just finish up that. I graduate August 10th, so pretty soon coming up, and really just been figuring out, you know, what I want to do in my next chapter of my life, but really like adjusting to a new workout schedule, you know, a new routine, just figuring it all out, which is exciting and fun. And um, yeah, I definitely want to stay involved in lacrosse. I've been coaching this summer at Skywalkers. I've been coaching the um, eighth grade team. So I really enjoyed my time doing that. Um, And I just like love giving back to, you know, where I started my career at Skywalkers and just been having so much fun doing that. Yeah, it must feel weird to have so much free time as well. When you're a student athlete, you have so much going on in your schedule. So it must feel a little weird to have all this time to do whatever you want, basically. Yeah, I feel like I need to be moving like (laughs) all the time every day. So I'm not used to it, but I'm learning that, you know, it's okay. You don't need to be, you know, doing a million things at different times a day. So, yeah, it's exciting. Well, I want to start off the podcast talking about the beginning of your career and sort of working all the way up to where you are today. So you're from Forest Hill, Maryland. Uh, Talk about growing up there and how did you start playing lacrosse? Yeah, so growing up in um, Forest Hill, I loved it. Love living here. Love being here. It's definitely a small, you know, tight knit community where mainly everybody knows each other. You know, there's always connections somewhere and there's just like a strong sense of support. So I think you know, growing up, my family is very active and we spent a lot of time like outside just playing as many sports as we can. My parents always, you know, made sure we were being active. We were playing, I was playing soccer, lacrosse, basketball, you name it. I was just out there, you know, staying active. And my parents just saw, you know, sports as an opportunity to keep us moving, keep us, you know, involved. And then, you know, I started playing lacrosse at a very young age and really I fell in love with the game like instantly and I just loved how you know fast paced it was and you know all the different skills required for the sport just it was so it was so fun and I just had so many fun times with you know meeting new people and just staying connected and yeah I really really fell in love with the sport and dedicated myself to get better every day and my coaches and teammates growing up were very instrumental in my development as a player. So yeah, the guide, their guidance and the support um, in that environment really helped me, you know, develop my skills and develop a deep passion for lacrosse. Now growing up, were there any teams or players that you like to watch? Yeah, I definitely loved watching Maryland and UNC. Just, I was a big lacrosse fan growing up and just looked up to them and their teams and I loved watching you know Taylor Cummings she was very dominant on the field and versatile and her leadership was what made her an outstanding player and just like watching her play for Maryland was always fun and you know I really wanted to 
be her one day. So I really looked up to her. And, you know, as for teams, I also loved, obviously, watching Maryland and UNC and just their consistency and teamwork and, you know, their championship mentality were so inspiring. And, you know, they always played with unity and such, like, so much precision, which was something I, you know, always aspired to do in my own game, like, growing up. Yeah, it must have been a full circle moment for you wanting to beat UNC um, when you were at Clemson a few years after you were being a fan of that team uh, before your recruiting process, obviously. Yeah, yeah, it definitely was like full circle, you know, playing in the ACC and just playing against all those teams. I like grew up watching and wanting to play with or against like it was just full circle for sure. Now, before college, you played for your high school with Maryville Preparatory School where you were the high school MVP in 2018, and you were also a team captain as well. So just talk about your high school lacrosse experience and what's like your favorite memory when you look back on that time. Yeah, so playing at Maryville and just like playing with all those girls on my team were just such a so many memorable years and like in my athletic career. And, you know, being a part of that team was just such a good experience and shaped me, you know, both as a person and as a player. Um, you know, I was fortunate enough to have so many great coaches at Maryville and so many great people I played with, grew up playing with too. And they were all so supportive and, you know, we always pushed each other to be our best. So really the competitive environment and, you know, the high expectations set by our coaches really helped me develop, you know, a strong work ethic and a deep understanding of the game where, you know, we had so many intense practices and, you know, games and game plans and emphasis, our emphasis on teamwork all like contributed to my growth as a player. So, yeah. And then I was, like you mentioned, being named uh, the MVP in 2018. That was like a huge honor and just something I was so excited about because I've put in so much hard work and dedication to the sport and because of how much I care about it. And I, you know, I wanted to become, you know, one of those girls growing up, like one of the Taylor Cummings growing up, I wanted to be that. So, you know, it was, I, it was definitely a proud moment for me and a reflection of the support and encouragement I received from my coaches and my teammates. So, you know, also being team captain was another highlight of my high school career. And um, it really taught me the valuable leadership skills, you know, how to motivate and inspire others and, how to handle pressured situations and just like how to lead by example, both on and off the field. Now you also played club lacrosse for Skywalkers. What was it like playing up for that team uh, and how did it sort of help prepare you for college lacrosse with UMBC along with your experience with Maryville as well? Yeah. So playing for um, Skywalkers was definitely, you know, an incredible experience and being a part of that family, you know, was where I truly fell in love with the sport and realized my desire to improve every single day. So the environment really fostered a deep sense of passion and commitment to lacrosse. You know, one of my most remarkable aspects of playing for Skywalkers was definitely like the quality of the coaching. Our coaches were outstanding. They were dedicated, very knowledgeable, and, you know, they were genuinely invested in each player's development. So they didn't just see us as, you know, lacrosse players. They saw our potential and were always committed to helping us reach, you know, our goals and practices were never easy. We had, I think our club was always known for like, hard intense practices which were so challenging and the training was hard but it really helped us like grow as players and the coaches were tough on us because they knew what we were capable of and wanted to push us to be our best so really you know just growing up in that environment really prepared me for where I where I was now and just overall was such a great experience and um, also like the team dynamics were exceptional like our, our teammates were everybody was so talented and hardworking, and being surrounded by all these like this motivated group of players was so inspiring and you know we we did it together we always pushed each other to improve and supported each other through you know the ups and downs and our friendships were formed within the team they were like 
so in, invaluable and creative and and creating a supportive and motivating environment. Well, let's transition now to a recruiting process with UMBC. Uh, what was that, uh, I guess, process like for yourself and what made you want to go there versus other schools you might have looked at? Yeah, so our the recruiting process for me was uh, before the rule change. So I, I was a pretty young player and I was definitely some someone who like peaked a little later than others. But um, I just knew like right when UMBC reached out to me, I was like, oh, it's like definitely a really cool school. I'd love to visit. So I was like, it's close to home. You know, it would be so cool to be able to like go home when I wanted and just, you know, being close to home was something I really wanted. So um, right when I visited UMBC, I immediately felt like such a strong connection with the campus and, you know, the facilities and the coaching staff, especially, I truly like those were the most amazing coaches. And I still to this day, I'm, you know, I, I'm connected with them. We talk on and off and they're just so supportive. And, you know, the lacrosse program also had a good reputation for being competitive and was very well, well respected. And I was just so impressed by, you know, the team dynamics and the support system they had for student athletes. And um, the coaches also just showed such genuine interest in my development as a player and a person, which, you know, was so important to me and made me feel like, wow, like they really care about me as a person as well as like an athlete. And this is something I wanted, you know, in college and their vision also for the program and where it could go is, you know, fostered such a positive and growth oriented environment, which like resonated with me very well. So also academically, UMBC offered, you know, the um, major I wanted to pursue, which was media and communications and um, <clears throat> which was also like a big factor in my decision. And, you know, I wanted a school that provided a strong balance between athletics and academics where, you know, I could pursue my academic interest while, you know, playing lacrosse at a high level. So overall, that's why I definitely fell in love with UMBC and wanted to go there. The mascot is also pretty cool as well. Mm -hmm. I know that my, I don't know if that had anything to do with your decision, but I definitely like the retriever mascot. It's very unique. Yes. Yes. I love it. I love being, you know, the retrievers. It was so perfect. Everything was so perfect about that school. Do they have like a live mascot, like some schools do with like a dog or is it just a person in a costume? Um, maybe sometime like back then, but definitely, yeah, just like regular mascot. Oh, okay. That would be cool to have yeah. like an actual retriever on campus. I think that would be a lot of fun, but yeah, uh, I don't know, maybe just a future suggestion for them if they're listening to this podcast yeah, really at all. Cool. Now, as a freshman, what was sort of the biggest adjustment you had to make to college and cross? I think just first was just the physical demands, which were so much greater than what I have experienced, you know, the speed, strength and skill level of, you know, players were just like, it was, everything was high, like was higher. And I, you know, had to elevate my fitness and conditioning to, you know, initially like keep up, but, you know, practices were obviously longer, more intense and, the expectation for, you know, your physical performance was constant. And this, yeah, this really meant like just committing to, you know, everything they're giving you, like uh, our hard strength and conditioning program, really, you know, taking that and just running with it, like paying like closer attention to your nutrition and also ensuring like you're recovering to prevent injuries. So everything like physical demands, that was, you know, definitely a big adjustment, but it's something that you easily adjust to in a couple of weeks. And also I think, you know, balancing academics with athletics was just another big adjustment. So the college, you know, the workload is more challenging and time consuming and managing my time effectively became very important. I had to you really develop strong organizational skills to keep up with my classes, um, my assignments and just studying while, you know, dedicating time to practices, games and traveling. It was just 
hard to find that balance between academic responsibilities and athletic commitments. But, you know, we had things like study hall and, you know, our support system was insane with all the um, academic staff and just everybody was always looking out for you, making sure you had everything in line and you were always good to go. So Mm -hmm. that was very, very helpful. Also just um, being, you know, I was close to home, but still being away from home was hard to, you know, adapt to a new environment, which was, you know, like just building new relationships with teammates and coaches and just adjust to living on campus. And, you know, you just really became more independent. And that was just like all part of the transition to college. Now in 2020, in your first season before the pandemic shut down, shut down everything, including your season, uh, just talk a little bit about your freshman year and how you handled the challenge of having your season get cut short. Yeah. So my freshman year, I was just definitely so excited just to be a part of this, um, a part of this community and, you know, adjusting to the collegiate level of play and just, you know, really adjusting to like the UMBC lacrosse team and just really getting to know everyone was so exciting. But, you know, when COVID hit, that was definitely something that was very sad and, you know, hard to adjust to, but um, yeah, I mean, like my, the beginning of my freshman season was definitely filled with like a lot of hard work and just excitement. And, you know, I was like focused on learning from my coaches, the upperclassmen improve, like always improving my skills and contributing, contributing to the team, like in many ways I could practices were hard and games were, you know, super competitive, which provided me with, you know, so, so many like experiences and a deeper understanding of lacrosse at that level. But, you know, when the pandemic hit and everything was shut down, it was hard. It was definitely something I was upset about and we'd been working so hard and we were excited to see how far we could go with this team specifically. And, you know, that just really brought a lot of mixed emotions, disappointment, I was frustrated and, you know, uncertainty about what, you know, when we would be back together. So our team really just stayed connected, <laughs> even though, you know, we weren't physically together our team always stayed connected with it whether it was like on zoom we had meetings check-ins you know and we would hold hold each other accountable with workouts um to just like support each other through this hard time and you know it was really crucial in keeping everybody you know updated together and staying motivated and just really having to keep a, a routine helped me really stay focused and productive while we weren't together at UMBC but really just held each other accountable made sure you know we always talked to each other every day was something that we really focused on during this time now what was it like playing in the American East Conference and just the competition we faced each game yeah playing in the American East was definitely very it was so competitive every team was good like everybody was so good and um, it was a great experience. It was always a hard fought battle between everyone. And I got, we got to travel to, to, to some pretty cool places. We went to Vermont, like New Hampshire. It was like a pretty far drive, but it was, you know, o- overall great experience and really playing against these teams was so fun every year. And just the um, America East tournament, especially just trying to make that it's only four teams go. So it's really just you know, so competitive and just overall, it was exciting. What's like your favorite memory with UMBC when you look back on it now? Um, I think in all really just meeting so many amazing people in my life and just having such strong relationships that will last a lifetime. I'm still connected to so many people, you know, from UMBC and that team and just, they're all like my best friends. So that's definitely just the core memory just overall at UMBC. But if I had to pick another memory, it definitely was um, my senior year. We won in overtime against Temple, which always was like a hard, hard um, team we played against. And I scored a game in overtime and it was just a goal in overtime. And it was just such a good memory because we always wanted to beat them. And 
we were all so excited and it wasn't our best game we played, but we, you know, we were always fighting back and, you know, came back and won that game. It was so fun. Now, when you look back on your time with UMBC, what would you say is like the biggest improvement you made to your game? Yeah. So I definitely think, um, learning to take on different roles, I was always a heavily marked player and teams would oft, often face guard me. And I had to learn that I needed to contribute in many different ways. So I wouldn't be as easily scouted by other teams. So it just became becoming a more versatile player, you know, able to adapt to different positions, like playing up top on offense or playing down low. And just like this flexibility made me more, valuable asset to the team as like I could contribute effectively in you know many different situations um so really just taking on that these many different roles and you know it def definitely re required a lot of extra practice and you know willingness to step outside my comfort zone and realize that you know I can help my teammates in many different ways just that sort of mental shift like that focus on those different aspects really really improved over the years at UMBC and also you know as I progressed throughout my career there I definitely developed stronger communication and leadership skills being a captain and um, being able to effectively communicate on the field was very important for the team and being able to lead and motivate my teammates you know, really helped us perform as a unit and, you know, just serving as a mentor for younger players and stepping into leadership roles taught me, you know, importance of fostering a supported and cohesive team environment. Now, in 2023, you played your final game with UMBC in a win over UNH. Uh, what emotions were you feeling after that game and what, what will you take away uh, from your time with the Retrievers, I guess, looking back on that after your college career is over at, at this point in your life. Yeah, I definitely felt a lot of different emotions. I definitely, like one of them was definitely, I was so proud of our team's performance, our hard work, and, you know, the journey we've all taken together to get to where we were and just ending my college career in a victory was you know, just sort of like a testament to our dedication and perseverance throughout the season. It was, you know, it was satisfying, uh, like a cumulative, um, satisfying, like winning, like putting in all of our effort and the dedication throughout the years. So that win was so important, but also like reflecting back on it, it was like a strong sense of nostalgia, I guess, <laughs> as I like reflected on my time with UMBC and, you know, just reflecting on the memories of practices, games, you know, team bonding and the friendships I've built all like rushed through my mind as like that moment came to a close and just thought about the person I was when I first joined the team and how much I'd grown both as a player and an individual. So definitely that journey, you know, had been filled with highs and lows and each moment had contributed to my development. Um, I also was very grateful. Um, I was definitely thankful for the incredible support from my coaches, my teammates, family and friends, you know, their guidance and encouragement I received throughout my time at UMBC was vital and it was so instrumental in my success. I was also so like so grateful for the opportunity to re represent UMBC also and just be a part of such a dedicated and passionate lacrosse program. I was also definitely very sad as my like last, you know, time where putting that jersey on, it was very sad and just, um, you know, I was excited about the future, but in the next steps in my life, and it was hard to say goodbye to such, you know, a significant part of my ident identity and, you know, my daily routine across at UMBC has been a central part of my life and just moving on from it was so emotional, but it was definitely bittersweet. Now, after that season, you entered the transfer portal and went to Clemson. What led to your decision to use your extra year of eligibility and go to Clemson? Yeah. So really like because of COVID having that extra year, I 
realized I was like, you know, this is such a great opportunity to go on and, you know, get my master's and, you know, all the hard work I did at UNBC, I was like, I have always dreamt of playing in the ACC specifically and just being a part of a program that is that like, it's so successful and just being, you know, playing at the highest level and being a part of the um, ACC conference is something I always dreamt of. So Clemson has always been a dream of mine. I remember growing up, I always said to my parents, I was like, I wish Clemson had the cross. Like I would love to go there. The school is amazing. You know, um, so I, they were like the first people I was like, I want to go here so bad. I reached out and I was like, this is it. This is the place I want to go. And I was just so excited to, you know, to be a part of Clemson. Yeah. What was it like playing in the ACC and just the competition faced each game? Yeah. Playing in the ACC was incredible. It was so fun. It was so cool. Like, you know, you're gr growing up watching all these teams in the ACC and wishing, you know, you were a part of that. It was definitely a full circle. I was like, wow, like I'm going against these teams now. Like, this is cool. I'm a part of this conference. This is something I always dreamt of. It was so fun. It, every game was so competitive and you just wanted to win. You just wanted to prove yourself every game. And it was so fun. And just being able to play against all these amazing teams in the ACC was just overall, the experience was incredible. And I'm so thankful for it. Now, obviously you were a grad student last season and you had a very young team uh, with Clemson. So what type of leadership did you want to bring towards the team? Would you consider yourself more of a vocal leader or the by example type of player? Yeah, as a grad student last season, I definitely like aimed to bring a leadership style that was um, very inclusive, supportive, and just motivational. So my goal was to use my experience and, you know, to posit positively, you know, influence team my teammates and just help create a cohesive and very motivated team environment. So I wanted to like continue to demonstrate a strong work ethic, my dedication both on and off the field and discipline um, by consistently showing, you know, showing up prepared, giving my best effort in practices and games and, you know, balancing my academic responsibilities. I just aimed, I wanted to set the standard for my teammates, definitely somebody who um, leads by, like through example, more than like vocally, I think, um, you know, I really recognized also the importance of being approachable and just supportive and especially for younger players who might, you know, be going through all these challenges of college lacrosse for the first time. I just wanted, you know, wanted to make it priority to be available for guidance or encouragement and helping like give them advice and just fostering an environment where, everybody felt comfortable in seeking help and discussing, you know, any of their concerns. I just always wanted to be there for them. Now you played your final collegiate game with Clemson in a 14 to 12 loss with Notre Dame. Looking back on that loss and just the season in general, how would you re reflect in your time with Clemson, helping the program get big wins against top uh, ACC teams, as well as uh, winning its program's first ACC playoff game as well? And were you just surprised that your team didn't make the tournament last year as well, since you guys accomplished so much and took that next step uh, from the first year of the program, the previous season? Yeah, so that Notre Dame loss was definitely hard, you know, to accept but especially like knowing it was my last game you know in a Clemson jersey despite you know that disappointment I am I was so proud of how we played and fought until the very end um you know we dem very like we definitely demonstrated resilience our teamwork and you know we had that never give up attitude so you know that the close game against, you know, a strong opponent like Notre Dame showed how far we had come as a team and definitely was so grateful for that experience. And, you know, our performance throughout the season had, you know, we had so many good moments and, you know, ups and downs, and we were so competitive in many games, including, you know, this loss against Notre Dame, but 
you know, um, we definitely wish we made the tournament. We, we've, you know, we gave it our all that season and we wish we did, but, you know, overall, I'm just so incredibly grateful for the coaches, you know, believing in me and taking me in, um, as a transfer and just that the opportunity to be a part of something special Clemson, you know, women's lacrosse was something I am forever grateful. So let's transition now to a segment I like to call the non lacrosse segment, where I ask you some non lacrosse questions to hopefully get to know you a little bit more off the field. So first one is if there was a movie made about your life, who would you want to play yourself? Um, I think I'd pick like someone like, I guess, Jennifer Lawrence. She's very funny and, you know, definitely like a down to earth actor, actress. Um, She brings a lot of, you know, energy and um, enthusiasm in her roles. And, you know, she's just so funny. And I think she would make a very good, you know, <laughs> somebody who would be very good at playing me in a, in a movie. Now, what is the most interesting thing you've read or seen this week? Um, I think going, I, as I was going through Instagram the other day, I saw like Charlotte North, like 92 mile per hour shot, which was insane. I think that was so cool to see and just how, you know, even I think like men's and women's lacrosse is like, especially with, you know, somebody is like a powerful shot as, as hers is pretty insane to see, like just, it was so cool. Now, who has the best off the field style on the Clemson women's lacrosse team and the UMBC women's lacrosse team? Hmm. At Clemson, I definitely would say Ella Little. She always had so many good outfits, like pregame outfits, her shoes, like everything about her. She showed up in like a cool outfit every day. Um, and at UMBC, I'd say probably my roommate Jenna McDermott she had so many she also had so many good like creative outfits and cute things I always wanted to steal from her <laughs> but yeah definitely those two now last non-lacrosse question is what is one item on your bucket list that you hope to accomplish one day um I, I want to just travel I've been to a couple places in Europe but I want to travel so many places so many other places in Europe I would love to go to Italy that's like definitely a goal of mine um yeah just like really traveling the world getting to experience different parts of the world is something I really want to do now let's get back to some lacrosse questions now just the final one I want to ask you was what should be done to help grow women's lacrosse from your perspective yeah I definitely think like exactly what we're doing now just you know engaging former players into like interviews like this and just growing the game by you know through social media and just spreading awareness and really like just showing other people like their experiences growing up and playing lacrosse and just sharing that I think this this is a perfect perfect example and just this is definitely something that is growing and continuing to um inspire young players I think just let having them hear from people like us and just is really cool and I think something that is you know definitely good for the game now before we let you go Claire do you have any shout outs you want to give to your teammates family members and friends and who should we have on the podcast next yeah I definitely would shout out you know my parents all my coaches Clemson UMBC my club coaches everyone who's you know, help me get to this point to where I was, where I am today and all the things that they've helped me, you know, accomplish and just their belief in me, just thanking them and always being so supportive, which was so important throughout my career. Um, and I think you should have my sister, Bryn Boxty. She is a goalie at Wagner. Um, I think she'd be a good one for the next podcast or my other roommate from UMBC, Jenna McDermott. She played with me all four years and then she transferred to San Diego State for her last year. Oh, wow. That would definitely be fun to hear about yeah. West Coast Lacrosse for sure. Yeah. Well, Claire, I just want to say thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate your time. I think you're a great player. I think you're a great person and I'm excited to see what the future holds for yourself and best of luck with that. Um, I'm excited to see what you end up uh, deciding to do. 
Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it.